it's interesting, and I'm trying to think of who it was that, uh, I don't know, it might have been actually uh, Garrett that made me think of it. But, you know, we've often talked about, you know, Hogan was, you know, as champion. It's like, oh, you just feed him monsters. You feed him monsters. And it's like Paul Orndorff and Randy Savage was, you know, exclude the Mania 3 uh, Andre match. It's like his two biggest drawing opponents were Orndorff and Savage, who were not giants. You know, Paul was a smidgen under six feet and Savage was under 250, probably under 240 for a lot of his run. And we've also heard of, you know, how big of a draw Piper Hogan would have been if Piper would be willing to do a draw. And it's like, when you think of the big rivals for Hogan and the big draws, like they're smaller guys. Orndorff, Savage, Piper would have been. You know, Flair, when he went to WCW, was a big draw. It's like, I think there's a bit of a myth and we remember... Bundy because it was mania too when we remember you know his bigger foes but Orndorff in a different time would have been a pay-per-view main event guy and it's like would have been remembered more because he was he was great it's like there was something about Mr. Wonderful and the way he carried himself and his absolutely absurd 80s feathered hair that you know he was he was such a great pro wrestler pro wrestling character that he had all of those elements you know you talk about you know the body and the look and the gimmick and the work and it's like he was he was really great and i was a big paul orndor fan even though at the time i probably wouldn't have thought i was because he was a heel and i would have been you know fan of the baby faces but he was he was really a big deal and i, th- I think people could uh, remember him for more because he didn't get that WrestleMania, whether it was two or three or whatever he could have had. It's it's a shame he didn't get it because he certainly was worthy of it. Well, you got to remember, uh, it's tough to teach an old dog new tricks, Lance. You're starting to learn that. Your advanced age. So Hogan himself was a giant. So you got to think about from Vince's perspective. His first massive star when he went national was a giant. And prior to that, for his father... You know, his biggest, one of his biggest draws, one of his biggest touring draws, was a giant. It was Andre the Giant. Puerto San Martino was, was, uh, you know, height-wise he was not a giant, but he was a big dude. And then, you know, the massive WrestleMania three. what do we have? A giant, Andre the Giant. So, I'm sure he sees these things, and in his mind it's like, well, we need giants. But as you note... For fans, and, you know, Dave still says this to this day, no one gives a shit about how big you are. The reality is, it's, I don't want to say it's all about wrestling ability and the quality of the wrestling, but all of those smaller guys that you mentioned, Orndorff, Savage, Piper, Piper, they could all work, and they could all have a good match with Hogan. When you have a giant champion, I mean, the the obvious thing is, you know, giant baby face, it's going to be a lot easier if he's facing an even bigger heel, okay? That's that's common sense. But if you're a good enough small worker, you can make that work with a guy like Hulk Hogan. So, yes, a lot of his best drawing feuds, uh, based on having, in large part, like good personalities and good matches, like Randy Savage, what a personality, Roddy Piper. You know, they were smaller, but they had larger-than-life personalities, and in reality, in wrestling, that's enough. If you've got a guy who can talk and can work, he can make it work with a, a giant babyface champion. But I can see that's what Vince learned. My champion was big. My, ch- my best challenger, Andre, was big. That's just what he thinks. He thinks it to this day, big. And it's true. It really doesn't matter all that much. Well, I, I think the, the the key is, and again, I've you know mentioned many times that I do have a size bias, but it's like, Size is only, you know, one ingredient in your soup, you know what I mean? And it's like, it's not the most important one by any stretch of the imagination. And like I, I don't like to say size doesn't matter today, because I think a big part of the appeal of a Will Hobbs is that he's a big dude. But obviously, Will Hobbs can't just be a big dude, or who gives a damn? But it's like, Will Hobbs is a pretty solid worker, and then with Team Taz, it ups his personality, and all of a sudden, it's like, he's a star and has value. Size is a big part of that, but I don't care about you if you're just big. 
You know what I mean? Like you say, it's like if you're a great personality, you can be smaller. If you're a great worker, you can be smaller. But if you're just big, I don't give a damn. But if you're big and credible and can work and or have a great promo, because, you know, like Piper, I think is a great example. It's like people might jump on it. So it's like I don't consider Piper ever being a really good wrestler. It's like I don't really recall him having a lot of great matches. It's just his personality and his promos were so amazing. And again, he was a good brawler and you got into that, you know, that fire that he had. It's like he was a great professional wrestler, but, you know, technically he wasn't a good wrestler. And then there's guys that were, you know, big but didn't have personality. It's that magic formula of mixing it. And obviously Orndorff had such a good body that he was, and also the rep of being tough, because apparently he really was. It's like you looked at him and thought, that's a big, tough son of a bitch. And then obviously having Bobby Heenan out there for his promo stepped him up even more. And his matches were good because his stuff was believable. Where again, I think, I think it was you and Dave where Dave was, you know, by today's standard, he's not really a good work. It's like match quality wasn't the goal back then. It's like, as long as you knew how to manipulate the crowd and do so with, you know, punching and kicking, it's like, that can be a good match. And that's what a lot of the, 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 Orndorff Hogan matches were it was you just needed to beat Hogan up and let him sell so that he could hulk up and make his comeback and looking at Paul Orndorff it's like okay I absolutely believe this guy could kick the shit out of somebody so it's like he's got the credibility of a, of, of a big tough dude it's like that was well I, I think also you you mentioned that you've got a size bias and I don't want to speak for you, Lance, but I don't even think it's so much a size bias as it is a, a believability bias. Because my, my feeling is there are many different body types in wrestling. There's not just one type, okay? But no matter what your body type is, I have to be able to suspend my disbelief when I watch your match, okay? If you're a big, strong, Will Hobbs-looking dude, yeah, it's easy. This guy's a big, jacked-up dude like he'd beat my ass. If I look at, uh, I've watched plenty of MMA. If I see a guy who's a little bit leaner, but he's like got a great physique, like a Matt Riddle, and and you see him doing things, whether it's his submission wrestling or whatever, you can believe that eh, that guy's not as big as Will Hobbs, but like that guy's believable. If you see a, a big guy like Bronson Reed, who's not really a muscular guy, but he's like he's a big guy, and he knows how to use his weight, he squishes people. Like, literally squishes them. He smashes them off the top. He does a great spot where he whips them over the ropes and he just runs over them like Vader. Like, he knows how to work where when you see him, he doesn't come across like a power lifter, but he does come across as a powerful man who knows how to use his great weight to his advantage. So, every different body type can work as long as I believe what I see in the ring. Not, not believe it, but like, I can suspend my disbelief that this person is a threat to somebody else inside a wrestling ring. Yeah, you can believe this really could happen. And, yes. and I, I think you're right, because obviously I was a big fan and supporter of, again, I loved working with Ultimo Dragon, who was a small guy. Rey Mysterio was, a, you know, even Spike Dudley. I loved working with Spike Dudley that they weren't big people but they told a convincing believable story for who they were because obviously both dragon and ray were unbelievable athletes they could fly and do things so smooth and so great but even spike dudley who actually isn't as small as you think because again it was the 90s but dude that guy was huge but spike especially in ecw it's like little spike dudley it was lsd spike dudley he was a whacked out crazy dude that could take an ass whooping and survive he wasn't out there acting tough and, you know, out wrestling me and so forth. It's like he was, he found a way of presenting himself in a believable manner. But yeah, when I, if I watch someone and I don't instinctively believe they could beat someone up or survive in a athletic competition, then it's hard for me. And it was, I remember when, um, when Eddie Kingston made, uh, you know, before he got signed, his first appearance when he was on AEW, I had someone, and I'm quite sure they were looking at, to try to get me to bury Eddie Kingston, where, you know, they wanted my opinion on, you know, Eddie's appearance and stuff. And I'm like, I'm fine with it because Eddie Kingston isn't selling himself as an Olympic caliber athlete. Eddie Kingston isn't selling himself as a highly trained, fine-tuned machine athlete. 
he's a tough guy from the street that fights and he's a tough motherfucker. It's like, I believe that. It's like Or another example from the same company is a Darby Allen. That guy, he's he is skinny. I mean, he's downright skinny, okay? But what do we know about Darby? We know that Darby's a crazy skater, and he falls on cement all the time. And if you look at his offense, what does it consist of? He hurdles his body at you. He falls off the top with a coffin drop that just squishes you. Like, he has offense where even though he's small, you think, man, even a guy at that weight, if he ran at 50 miles an hour and flew through the ropes and just hit me with his whole body and sent me in and through the barricade, yeah, that would suck. It's all how you work and present your character as opposed well, yeah. to just pure size or those that just i will do these moves regardless of my size and, and darby's a great example because i've mentioned before on the show that again i mentioned my size bias it's like when i first saw darby allen before i saw him wrestle it's like i had that it's like are you kidding me look at the size of this kid but then i watched him and the dude won me over pretty quickly because he does present a unique style and a style that I can believe, like you say, that this is a crazy dude that does not give a damn about his own personal well-being, and he's willing to hurdle himself at high volume at people and take unbelievable risks. And again, hopefully he'll live to be a ripe old age. I don't know, but I can believe it. And I think, too, I've worked in a bar for a lot of years You know, before I broke in and when I broke in, I bounced, and it's like, I've run into those guys that are a little bit crazy, and, and you know that it's like, I'm going to have to kill this guy to get him to stop fighting if this turns into a fight. And even though I'm bigger and stronger, it's like, there's those guys that you just don't want to get into with them because you know they're a little bit crazy, they're not going to do things rational, and they're dangerous. And I think Darby has tapped into that, and it allows me to believe or suspend my disbelief whatever term you want to that i can believe that fighting this guy is dangerous and if you know it's that if i'm not willing to die it's like this guy might beat me just from you know attrition and and nuts and you know just intestinal fortitude to steal a phrase so yeah it's it's finding that where if you are going to like, if you were Darby Allen size and you take away the gimmick and he just wrestles the same as everybody else, it's like, I'll watch a bigger dude just wrestle because I don't believe this kid is going to, you know, I don't want him standing there trading punches with Will Hobbs or I'm turning the channel going, this is just believable crap. But if he digs his skateboard art, or like you say, you know, run at the ropes at a thousand miles an hour and just tuck his head and hurl his body at him, it's like, okay, I'll watch this. MJF now has a cryptocurrency. Yes. I have never purchased a cryptocurrency in my life. I bought $100 of MJF coin. All right. And I'm watching it in like, in, in two minutes, it had gone up like five bucks, 10 bucks. I had to put in another 150 bucks. And all throughout the day, I've been watching it. It's kind of addictive. I'm sure it this, is. This money growing thing. Yeah. There are weekly awards. So basically, this would be like dividends. So all of the people that have purchased this uh, MGF coin, they're all in like this big pool. And then I don't even understand how this works, but like awards are given out. And you're given a portion uh, depending on how much of this MGF coin that you have. My dividends right now, if this is accurate, I am over $3,000 right now for my $250 investment. Wow. I know I've made more on this than Cameron Grimes made on GameStop. Sure. I am, in fact, going to the moon with this MJF coin here. I don't know how long it'll last. I mean, for, actually, it's going to last forever because I don't even know how to get the money back. I don't know how to get my money out. <laughs> you couldn't cash out if you wanted to. You don't appear to be able to get the cash back. Oh, no, so, that, that seems like a major bug Well, I mean, system. there's a way, I'm sure. It's like you got to... Are you? Well, I've been told you have to convert it to this other thing, and then once it's converted to the other thing, then you can convert it to another thing, and then you can like, eh, there's, but it can be done is the point. But it's easier just to But I don't know there. how. It's easier to just never look at it again. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, 
all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.